I am very excited for today's video because we're playing with Venezia and the new legendary upgrade or unique upgrade. Uh, this upgrade is giving us extra smokes and reducing their cooldown. To me, this is the most interesting part of all the Italian tech tree ships. This augmented smoke, this fuel smoke, whatever they call it, exhaust smoke generator, allowing you to travel at full speed while fully concealed by this smoke. And it really leads to some very interesting playstyles and opportunities in game. This is just going to allow us to abuse this smoke much more often. That's what this upgrade is allowing us to do. And it costs a little bit of research points. Um, getting pretty low right now, but I did just use my uh, double. Um, that is the easiest way to gain research points if you have that unlocked. Of course, we can go here. Um, if you're wondering, the Japanese destroyer line, specifically the Hirugumo line, is the cheapest to reset. Um, so there's just a little times two here. And then um, I only had to play the Hirugumo actually. So I have a few left over. You can see how many there. You just get a little multiplier. You don't actually have to play every single ship every time for research points, just as a little tip. Um, you can play the ship once and as many times as that multiplier says, that's how many research points you will be getting. So if you need a lot and you reset over and over and over again, that really only applies to people with a ton of free XP. That is the easiest way to get that done. And all you need is 300 base XP or a win. And that can even count in co-op. So that is going to be my recommendation. The easiest way to get research points if you have a ton of free XP. But back to the Venezia. I've played this ship quite a bit and I think it's a lot of fun. However, it can struggle sometimes when you don't have that exhaust fuel smoke um, available to you. It can be a little bit difficult to play as aggressive as this ship wants to without that get out, get out of jail free card. So my build here, I'm actually running reload mod. We're doing a bit of a weird lighthouse build, um, which if you didn't know is about increasing your concealment, which is usually a bad thing, but in this case, it gives us a better reload anytime someone is within our detection range. So we're gonna try and abuse that and the extra smokes as a way to sustain us while we're using such an aggressive build that can be easily countered by just a little bit of focus fire and uh, our lack of range too. 17 kilometers is a little bit tricky, but again, we do have a spotting aircraft and I've even taken Sansonetti and we're going to use him since, well, he's just gonna give us some extra range if we do manage to get a kill, which is very, very useful. So uh, let's see what this thing is capable of. I'm very, very excited to do uh, the smoke memes. So when you're playing a build like this with atrocious concealment, one of the best things you can do is use islands to push up with. We're going to get much, much closer to the enemy team than we otherwise would be able to in open water if we're gonna use islands as cover. We're gonna hope that this Holland is gonna spot for us. We did get into some super ship matchmakers, so the Satsuma, Kondi, they're gonna be a little bit tricky for us to deal with, but uh, we're gonna try and make good use of these smokes when needed but I don't want to waste them too early. And so that's why I'm going to play right here to start with. No planes means we're not going to get spotted over top of this island very easily. And uh, we should do pretty good work here if there is an enemy DD here. And there is. It is a Kleber. Now, if we get some good dispersion, which that doesn't look great. Yeah, three out of 15 sucks. <laughs> that should have been, that should have been much, much more. Oh my goodness. Uh, but sap hurts DDs a ton. And that's what you want to be hitting most of the time. Of course, cruisers are going to be a good target as well. Man, I wish I would have been doing a little more here. It is the Zao that's on us right now. It's fine. He's going very fast, and he's probably going to turn out there. Yeah. Hmm, unfortunate. That's okay. We're forcing him back. That's all right. Take a little pain here from the Kleber. Maybe a bit from the Zao as well. Not a huge deal, honestly going to be border scrubbing, so we'll do that. So, a bit of damage taken. Always important to uh, keep in mind what your smoke fire is, which is 9.9, .9, which means we're fine here. So then we just do this, and we disappear. How lovely is that? We have smokes, not a huge deal, and a Zao. 
So this is going to be the power here. There we go. See, imagine we hit that on the DD, man. Uh, unfortunate. Maybe we'll try into the Ohio here a little bit. Especially if he's slowing down. But we do want to hit broadsides when it comes to Venice and Sap. As it is very, very good against angled targets, bowing targets, but I still do uh, prefer shooting broadsides with it mainly. It's a little better than armor piercing when it comes to its pen angles, but it's no HE against bow on ships. So you do want to be a little bit careful there. So our smoke is up. Notice we only have a minute to go until we get another one back, but uh, we are going to be retreating here. Since yeah, I figured the Kluber would be able to spot us here, but we're in a retreating position. I'm really not too worried about it. However, that is a Soyuz that hasn't been spotted yet, right? Yeah, there's a battleship right there. Spooky. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's not been spotted yet. There we go. Wild stuff. Into a Soyuz, German battleships, Russian battleships, you do need to be shooting into the superstructure. That's really the uh, only spot you're going to get good damage in. You can see 9,000 feels pretty nice. Ohio is... Uh, well, he's probably not shooting us, actually, if he didn't hit us there. You know, that was at us. The maneuverability of this ship is pretty extreme, which is very, very nice in dealing with uh, battleship shots at longer ranges like this. Bowan Zhao. Yeah, not the greatest for us. All right. Ohio shot us again, I think. However, 5,000 is still pretty good there. Into a Bowan Zhao, that is. You can see how the Ohio, with its really, really slow, like a shell velocity, is having a tough time with us. It's great. It really feels good playing, uh... Hello? Can I shoot? What? Game? Hello? Oh my goodness, what is going on? Oh, where's our fire? Fire. Uh, what do I bind it to? Control? I guess we're using control to shoot. Okay. Oh no, and then that brings up Windows highlight the mouse position. Oh my goodness. It's all a mess. It's a mess. Why can't the game just work? <laughs> Why doesn't the game just work? Okay, we've, we've uh, kited far too far back. Uh, let's see if we can uh, go undetected here and push up again. And we can. Great. Great. Um, I don't like this. Our Holland is super duper aggressive. Yeah, actually, let me unbind that real quick. Maybe I'll use a mouse button? Yeah. Use a side mouse button. We'll see if that works any better. <laughs> oh, World of Warships. Yeah. I, I actually... Yeah, okay. Side, bo side mouse button it is. Um, we're still in a relatively close match here. Uh, cap or ships-wise. But uh, Caps would say otherwise. Let's hope he doesn't have AP. And he's within 9 kilometers. So that means we... Um, Sorry, 9.9 .9 kilometers, which means well, we can't use our smoke here to get away. Ichi still, that's fine. Yep, our mouse is just bugged out in that corner. Feels bad. 10k, dang. Ship slaps. I'm staying angled though, because I'm worried about that. But also I'm worried about the Ohio, which just shot me. Okay, dodge Ohio. Now it's gonna be Soyuz next. We should probably be using a heal here. Oh, are we in one of those? I knew they were coming. Okay. Soyuz got one shot. Um, Ohio did, but it's unlocked because we were dark, I think. 
We're okay. Just barely, but we are technically okay. Right, I can't use my mouse button. My main fire button, that is. All right, let's see if we can't hit this Condi a little bit. All right, let's see if we can find this Zhao. Hello, Zhao. Go broadside to me. I swapped to AP. Typically, you don't want to be swapping to AP, but... Uh... Oh, come on, plane. But AP can be good against cruisers at closer ranges. Only back turrets. And now he's low enough that I know my uh, sap can do it, deal with him. Annoying. Tough game. Sap, don't fail me. Oh my goodness. Burn, please. Oh, sadness. Okay. Oh, our mouse is back. Nice. But I think we are certainly dead here. You get the Zhao, but I think the Flood kills us. Oh, uh, it might not, actually. Oh, my goodness. Ten seconds. <laughs> Three. <laughs> we're still alive. Oh my goodness, we're still alive. That's insane. Okay. We do get this cap, which feels great. And is our mouse working again? Hey, our mouse is working again. Let's go. Point eight. We're still fine to use our smoke fire. Remember, it's 9.9. .9. 25 seconds. Okay. Now we wait. Oh, nice. Good work, team. Torps are back up. We're going to use one set there. Now we're going to try and sneak around this island a little bit. Come on, turning radius. <laughs> You can see how difficult it can be to play the, uh... Oh no, smokescreen set, and there's gonna be a... Soyuz right here. There. Come on, Torps. There we go. Two seconds till our heal. <laughs> how are we alive? Well, we went in and took the cap. Killed some, killed some ships. That feels kind of nice. Right there. Oh, we didn't even get lit. That's so nice. 7k. Lovely. All right, we will get spotted now. Ohio can just overmatch us into oblivion. But let's hope he doesn't. Let's fake going one way and then slow down and go the other. Or he just maybe misaimed. He only got one. Nice, so Soyuz is gone. <laughs> We're alive. We lived! We lived! Oh my goodness. How hilarious is that? I can't believe it, dude. <laughs> well, see? The smoke screens, man. These fuel smokes are just fun. They're just fun. It's so disappointing to me that the um, battleship line and the destroyer line are kind of bad. Where they just aren't really good enough to take advantage of the smokes they get, in my opinion. Um, where, yeah, like, look at that. Eight and a half. The cruisers are definitely good enough. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness, I'm having fun. I might have to play this ship a lot more, guys. Because they just, they literally buffed the best thing about the ship, in my, in my opinion. Um, but we might, we might try a different build, uh, next game. 
We might try a little bit more sensible ideas. Maybe not going with the... Uh, look at the sap damage. Oh, man. I have not played this ship in a while, guys. I'll be honest with you. So it's been a while since I've experienced the joy that is sap. And the disgusting levels of damage it gives. Another 8,500. My goodness. Yeah, if we had actually hit shells on that poor... Uh, Bear early on. Oh my goodness, we would have absolutely destroyed him. Now we wait. We still have some smokes left. 10! 11! <laughs> oh, it's filthy. Sap is just filthy, man. Did we get him? Hey, we even get him. Wow, what a comeback. Kind of? Uh, well, it depends on what you mean. Uh, bugs in the game? I'm pretty dissatisfied that it's an eight-year-old game with these kind of bugs in the game. But uh, I had fun. So you know what? Let's just uh, not engage with that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, look at... Oh, my. We, like, we still did 17k to the Kleber, which is good. Really good. It's just a little disappointing we didn't get that hit off the bat. But uh, reasonable amount tanked, potential damage, it all feels pretty good. So I think reasonable, if you're wondering, does not include heavy HE. I think that's what it really comes down to. 15-8 uh, is difficult to uh, deal with. So reasonable, if you're wondering how to get the most actually out of your smoke, you need to take consumable enhancements here. That's going to increase the time that it's up by another 10%. More consumables on Superintendent, of course. Uh, Adrenaline Rush is amazing. You know, and even with 13.7, Top Grade Gunner is still going to activate a lot of the time. Just not quite as much. And we don't get the 10% damage buff of Heavy HE and Sap, but that's okay. We're a little bit more reasonable in this one. And I think given that we have four points left over, we could even run Survivability Expert, allow us to live just that little bit longer. An incoming fire alert, I mean, one of these two, priority target or incoming fire alert, is always nice to have when you're a cruiser. Uh, it lets you know when someone's taking some cross maps at you or something like that. And in this case, I might even go, I might even go range here, guys. I don't really want to, but hey, sometimes games are just more passive, especially more than what that last one was. Um, the smoke should allow us to get in a little bit closer, of course, but 13.7 uh, is a bit of a downside. If we're talking negatives of this unique upgrade, legendary upgrade, we don't take concealment, which feels kind of bad. Uh, not only is it giving us 10% better detection, which means we get 10% closer to people before they spot us, allows us to help on DD fights at closer ranges, maybe meaning more damage. Uh, the 5%... Um, worst dispersion of enemy shells fired at us isn't uh, insignificant. It is it is a big deal. So we are missing out on that as well. So we keep, keep that in mind. Um, but let's give it a go. 21 seconds kind of sucks for the reload, certainly. Um, but hey, we'll give it a go and uh, try with a little bit more passive build or easier build. Maybe not. that's the way to put it. This is a little easier to play, probably. Alrighty, game number two here. Let's uh, try this out. We're going to be trying to play wide here again, trying to help DDs. And with our extra range, you see how we're able to now reach back to the enemy spawn a little easier? Like this Schlieffen, for example. And as far as the um, concealment is concerned, now it's very similar to what our... Um, oh, not much damage there. It's very similar to what our torpedoes have, right? And that does allow us to get a little bit closer in when uh, shooting and dealing with people, which I really do like, honestly. There's this kind of idea of the ratio or the gap between your concealment and your maximum range that kind of dictates how comfortable the ship is to play a lot of the time. It allows you to uh, position a little farther away, a little safer, and still get your salvos on target um, and able to shoot at people. So when you take a full crazy build, like the lighthouse builds tend to be, um, it can be tricky. It certainly can be a little tricky. So for me personally, I tend to enjoy these ones a little more most of the time. Um, 
of the the lighthouse can work and we saw it working today but uh it's not nearly as consistent and if you know me i do value uh consistency quite a bit in uh this game schlieffen with the full send in early game here look at that just hit his superstructure and do 9,000 damage dang and then unfortunately he has to deal with the sub which does suck um but that allows us to play a little more aggressive over here about a 10 second lead time out to that venezia not too bad we do want to help on uh the druid here in this small end fight a little bit of damage there not too much or this sherman either one pretty far away but a sherman's pretty slow no, he's turning in and smoking. Okay. I thought he was going to turn out and uh, run at full speed for sure. Oh, he's into our petrol range. Okay. That's nice for us. As a Venice with a long reload with really high alpha, you do need to be making those uh, salvos count, right? It's not like a high DPM ship where you can just kind of shoot and then be... You know, always, always repositioning your shot. Oops, I'm in the way of this curve first here. My bad. Yeah, there we go. We'll just reverse away. <laughs> but you see how we hit, we hit like a really nice shot into the the uh, Sherman there. And you do need to be making sure you land those because you're unlikely to be getting a follow-up shot. Uh, it's very rare that that's gonna happen. We should keep in mind the sub might be up here already just as a potential threat to us it really does look like the enemy team is mostly going to be playing down here and yeah they're really running from here so instead of pushing the enemy's spawn right we are going to wow that uh that sherman got really low unfortunately we don't have much more into him but uh yeah, we don't want to push spawns. So we're going to push over towards... Oops, I hit our... Our Sherm... Or our small end. We have a small end on our team. Okay. Oh, we have ship-based depth charges. Lame. Okay, so we're going to have an almost impossible time dealing with this sub. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know what that big sound is, but... Is that the Kerfirst guns? He's so far away. Anyways, um, I'm going to push towards mid, like I always try to. And we'll see if we run into this druid or this sub. We might need to play around with our smoke screen as a potential way to deal with uh, with a sub. That's just a way to break line of sight, potentially. We do have a small end here to help us. If we spot him. Right there. Okay. And if the druid pops out, well, we're just going to smash him. There he is. Only two hits for pens. Kind of unfortunate. It's fine, though. Stay angled, and the druid's not going to really be able to do too much to us. Hindenburg pushing. So this is a situation where we want to uh, kind of crush this druid and then run away. Or use our smoke to potentially run away. Again, this smoke screen is just allowing us to do so many cool things. That's what I love about it. Send a blind shot in. And we get him. Let's go. That is very useful. And we're not getting shot at yet. So I think we're okay for now. Venice looks like he's going to turn out slightly. But I think we use it here now. Once we're coming out mid here, we're going to be a very, very juicy target for everyone. <laughs> so we can use it to cross gaps. You know, it's not just to get out of jail free card. It, it can be like a, oh, there's a big giant gap here that I can't cross normally. 
I would just get spotted and killed. Whereas with the smoke, we, uh, yeah, we are allowed to cross gaps like this and totally be fine. Which is wonderful. Looks like a pretty massive blowout, though, so far. Unfortunately. But that's how it goes these days sometimes. In comp pushing in a little bit. Yeah, we're going to run out of smoke here in a little bit, but that's all right. I do want to push in and try and get as much as we can out of this one. We're going to try and use our good uh, maneuverability here to dodge most of the incomp shot. And we do, in fact, do that. That's one of the kind of crazy things about this ship. You get just ridiculous levels of maneuverability. And people have such a hard time hitting you. Look at that. Price end follow-up shot. No chance. We'll shoot just before the smoke runs out. 11 into him there. And he's on to us. Nice. Okay. Well, a bit of a blow the second one. But you do have a little bit of an easier time when you play with range. If that battle had gone on longer or... We had more battleships or longer range type of stuff to deal with. Uh, I think I think it would have been very useful. Maybe more of those super ship games that are a little more passive. This one, of course, we didn't have to deal with carriers either game. So keep that in mind. Um, the carriers do skew things a little bit more towards the, the range build. But either one can work. Um, you just do really need the right matchmaker to be able to play that lighthouse one. And do really well. You can play it in, in difficult matchmaker as well. But yeah, it can be tricky into some carrier games like that. But I hope you enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun already with this uh, unique legendary upgrade. I think I'll have to play with it a bunch more. Uh, but for now, that's going to do it. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.